Today is the 3rd of June, 1980. Uh, back then remains the benchmark for what was the worst case scenario for what could be uh, a city when hit for uh, by a tornado. That night, seven tornadoes touched down in and around Grand Island. It was the only storm in the area and went on for three hours in the dark of night. Nearly $300 million of damage was left behind and a mountain of rubble created a monument to the devastating night. By all accounts, it was a normal June summer's day. But as the sun set, a storm began to brew over Hall County. This satellite imagery shows the storm growing and remaining over the same spot for three hours. As a tornado warning was issued, a report came in of a tornado. Then another. And another. Houses have been leveled. People are trapped in basements. Ordinarily, tornadoes move with a general forward motion, but this family of tornadoes remained over Grand Island, with many of their paths looping back on themselves and crossing one another. Direction didn't matter, however. What was left behind was nothing short of devastating. Ray Evans was attending a Bible study that night, but they disbanded as the weather turned. In about an hour, uh, the, sir you know, the sirens went off. We all headed to the basement. We were down there for hours. Uh, we could hear what seemed like the roof and the walls caving in above us, but uh, we lucked out. It, it was just the sound of that. Down Bismarck Road in East Grand Island, the fifth tornado would begin forming, which would be rated F4, the strongest tornado of that night. It moved west, then turned hard south to wreck South Locust Street. Bud Rasmussen lived in the path of that tornado. After live wires, on, you had to step over fire wires and they get South Local Street. We headed down there and it was pitch dark and all of a sudden the lightning flashed and I could see the outline. We had a great big sign up there. And I said, I guess we're okay, Dick. I would see the sign. I got up there and it was just the framework. Building everything was gone. You know, there wasn't anything left. Civil Defense and the National Guard will be called in to help with a response effort in the coming days. Debris, walls lifted, checked underneath for bodies, stuff of this nature. Some of the buildings like the Regal and the Holiday Inn and so forth, some of these have taken heavy damage. The search teams are going to have to call in heavy rescue equipment or heavy uh, machine equipment to help them tear out debris and stuff like this. Butch Nielsen was from Grand Island, but he was stationed in Colorado with the National Guard. He remembers his time returning to the damage. I mean, just wherever you looked, there was devastation. Now, my place where, where I lived, I, we didn't get hit, but several of our members in the, in the guard unit did, did get hit, their houses and stuff. So. Butch was at the airport for when President Jimmy Carter came to survey the city in the wake of the storm. We have approved immediately when the governor requested it, an emergency declaration to permit people to uh, survive economically the damage to their property. So now that we're 40 years on since this disaster, what should we still remember? I spoke with Mike Moritz at the National Weather Service about just that. What an event like that does is, is it, it does put it on the table and it says, number one, it can't happen. And that's hard to accept for some of us, that it can't happen to us. Advice Bob Criz, mayor of Grand Island in 1980, could have used. But I think as a citizen, I don't, didn't heed the warning because we've had them. I will next time. But there is still more to learn. And number two, I think it gives an opportunity to show how a community works together and, and, and works through a problem like that. And then three, it offers the opportunity to prepare potentially for another event that may happen. Whether it's a weather event or not, uh, preparation is the key uh, to survival. As I said, the strongest tornado was rated an F4 with two F3s, an F2, three F1s. To add to the bizarre nature of the event, three of those twisters rotated clockwise, backwards from 99% of all tornadoes in the Northern Hemisphere. Five people were killed and over 200 were injured, and we hope it never happens again. Sarah?